Hi there. The purpose of a chart is to set the focus on changes in values, but having lots of charts defeats this purpose. I'm Nabil Murad. In our worksheet we have sales amount by channel for each month. I would like to create a separate column chart for each channel and be able to switch charts by selecting a different option from a drop list. In this project, we'll create a drop list, a data validation list for the different channels. We'll then create a sample chart for one of the channels, format the different chart elements, and add a dynamic chart title. We'll be then creating a defined name using an offset function and a match function. To dynamically change charts for the different channels, we'll use the defined name as our source data. Finally, we'll test switching charts by using our drop list. We have a lot to learn, so let's see how we build our project from ground up in Excel. In this worksheet, I have the sales by channel for each month and for the different channels. So in column A, I have the 12 month, and then in columns B, C, D, E, I have the sales amount in millions for each one of the channels. I would like to represent these values graphically by creating a column chart, but I don't want to include the four channels in one single chart. I want to create a separate chart for each one of the channels. But instead of creating four charts, I'll be creating one single chart and then I'll be creating a drop list. Changing the value in the drop list will change the source data for my chart. Let's see how we do all that. So the first thing I'll be doing is to create a drop list in cell F1. So I'm selecting cell F1. I go to the data tab of the ribbon and then click on data validation. Alternatively, I could use the shortcut Alt D L. And then I want to create a list. So from the first down arrow, I select a list. And for the source, I specify the source for my list will be the different sales channels. And then I hit OK, and I would have created my drop list. I would like also to create a dynamic label that I'll be using for my chart title. I'm preparing for creating my chart. So I'm selecting cell H4, and I'll type an equal sign. I typed in double quotes, monthly sales for and a space and close the double quotation and then I type an ampersand shift 7 on your keyboard and then click on F1 to pick whatever comes from the drop list so right now I have a reseller and then I want to join it to another piece of text so I type another and symbol shift 7 on your keyboard and in double quote I type a space and then I type channel and close the double quotation when I hit enter, this is what I get, monthly sales for the reseller channel. If I click on the down arrow and then select the store, it changes automatically. I'll be using this for creating my chart. Now, let's create our column chart. And to create our column chart, I'll be selecting the labels and this first set of values that correspond to the online sales channel. I'm selecting all these values. I can go to the Insert tab and click on the down arrow for column chart and select this option, the cluster column chart. Alternatively, I can simply use the shortcut Alt F1 to create my column chart. Let's improve the appearance of our chart before making it a dynamic chart. To improve the appearance, I want to remove the vertical axis, the value axis, so I select it and hit Delete. I want to delete the horizontal grid lines, so I'm selecting them, and then I hit Delete. I want to reduce the gap between the different columns, so I click on one of the columns and then right click and select Format Data Series. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Control 1. I want to reduce the gap, so I drag the slider a little bit to the left, and now I reduce the gap between the different data points or the different columns. I want to change the color for each one of them so that it looks in a different color. That's the fill color. So I need to click on this bucket icon. And when you click on this one, you select the fill option. So I'm going to click on the triangle to the left side of fill. And here is the option, vary color by point. 
If I check this one, each one of the columns will appear in a different color, as you see right now. One more thing I would like to do is to bevel my different columns, and to do this I go to the Format tab of the ribbon, and each one of these columns is actually a shape, so I want to apply a shape effect by clicking on the down arrow for shape, select a bevel effect, and apply a bevel effect. We can add some data labels as well, and to add data labels, I'm going to click on the plus sign in the upper right corner of my chart, the Chart Elements button, and select Data Labels, but because I have lots of columns, there is kind of overlap, so instead of checking the box for data labels, I would like to format these numbers in a way that I don't see any decimal places. So I click on the little triangle to the right side of data labels and select more options. When I select more options, I'll take the check away from show data lines and then scroll down to the number and expand. Why? Because these are monetary values, so I want to represent them as monetary values by selecting currency, and then when I go further down, I want zero decimal places so that the numbers do not overlap each other. When I click outside, I would have applied this kind of formatting, which looks much better without any overlap between the different numbers. My next step will be bolding these numbers, so I go to the Home tab of the ribbon, and then bump it up a little bit if I want, and then make it bold, and I'll be doing the same exact thing for the horizontal axis, the category axis. I'm selecting the values in the category axis, I bump the font up, and then bold the labels. The final thing I would like to do is to apply a border and create a dynamic chart title. I already prepared for creating my dynamic chart title by combining text and the value coming from the drop list. So if I select H2, this is a formula that I created. I want to use this formula in my chart title, so I click on chart title, put it in the edit mode by hitting the F2 key, and then type an equal sign, and just click on this cell H4. When I hit enter, now I created a dynamic title, changing the value in the drop list will update my title as well. Let's format it so I can bold it, and I can make it blue, and it looks nice. Let's add a border to our chart by going to the Format tab of the ribbon, click on Shape Outline, and select a black color, and then click on the Shape Outline, go down to Weight, and let's select 1.5 point, and I would have created my chart. What's the next step? The next step is to make it dynamic, because right now, if I change my selection from the drop list, what changes is only the title, but not the columns. I want the column to reflect a new selection. Right now, if I click on the chart and look at the highlighted values, these are the online sales. So I want it to be dynamic, so whenever I change my selection from the drop list, the source data switches automatically, and to do this, I need to define a name. To define a name and store it in memory, I'll be using a dynamic function called the offset function. So let's see how we create this function, the offset function, which requires five arguments. The first three to specify a starting cell, and my starting cell will be cell A6. How many rows down? That's the second argument, zero row down. How many columns to the right? One single column in case of online, two columns in case of store, three columns in case of reseller, four columns instead of catalog. So my starting point will change according to my selection in the drop list in cell F1. As I said, the offset function requires five arguments. The first three arguments refer to the starting point, and my starting point will be A6. I don't want to move any row up and down, but I want to move a certain number of columns to the right depending upon my selection. And because it's depending upon my selection, the number of columns will be decided by using a match function to make it dynamic. The fourth argument is how many rows down you want to extend your selection. I want to include all the months of the year, which means 12 rows, and then I want one single column, and that will be the last argument. Let's see how we create our offset function inside a defined name. To create a defined name, I go to the Formulas tab of the ribbon and click on Define Name. 
let's give it a name I'm going to name my range different input and this range will be creating using an offset function and because I have ASIC selected I already have the sheet name change source followed by A6 with dollar signs which means this is my starting point instead of recreating it and because I have it I'm going to cut it and replace it by my offset function so I start defining my name by creating by offset function equal offset and then I open bracket as I said the offset function requires five arguments argument number one is your starting point and I'm going to paste what I cut which is cell A6 preceded by the worksheet name and then I hit come the second argument how many rows up and down would you like to start zero rows so I said I type zero and then comma how many columns right and left I don't know it depends upon my selection in the drop list so if I'm selecting online that means one column if I select store that means two and so on how can I extract the column dynamically by creating a match function so I'm typing match and then I open bracket what would you like to match I would like to match whatever comes from F1 and then I hit comma I want to match it to the column headers extending from B5 to E5 and then comma and I want an exact match so I type 0 which means exact and I close the bracket for my match function that was the third argument for the offset function the first three arguments in my offset function correspond to the starting of my selection and then I hit comma to move to the next argument argument number four how many rows up and down I want 12 months so I type 12 and then comma the last argument how many columns would you like to have your selection I just want one column at a time so I type one I close the bracket for the offset function and then I hit OK and now I created my offset function why did I create this defined name to store the source range in memory and to show you what I mean right now the source data is static it refers to the online values I want to make it dynamic and to make it dynamic I'm selecting my chart and then I go to the design tab of the ribbon and say I want to select my source data so when I click on source data here is the series that I'm representing and it's highlighting the online range but I want to modify it I want to edit the series by clicking on edit and then here at the very bottom what I would like to do is to replace the series values by the defined name I created I could name the range if I want but I can simply delete the values and note what I'm going to do right now I'm deleting the cell range but I'm keeping the worksheet name and I'll type different input that's the name I defined that's the worksheet name followed by the defined name range and then I hit OK and then I hit another OK and then test monthly sales for reseller channel look at the drop list if I change the drop list and then say I want the store sales look at that everything is dynamic monthly sales for the store channel if I click on the drop list one more time and select the catalog sales it's dynamic if I go back to the online sales everything is dynamic and it looks like the formatting didn't stick so before moving my drop list and moving my dynamic chart to a dashboard I might need to apply the formatting for the different channels but at least I got the functionality and it's working just fine the label is dynamic the columns are dynamic and the range selected is dynamic when I select reseller it's reseller that is highlighted if I change the range and say I want the catalog sale look at that it's the catalog range that is highlighted thank you for watching if you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe and see you in our next training video.